So here's where we're at so far. We've got the front epoxied on there. We've got some epoxy putty to hold this on as well as some hot glue. And we drilled a hole in the side for this piece of plastic, which used to be part of the slide. And that's going to act as a spring rest for this. So I'm gonna shove the spring in there and I'm gonna dab it with some hot glue. And that'll keep the spring from flying off and actually use the catch there. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And you can see the spring is already on there. I actually lost one of these springs, so this is actually a replacement, which hopefully works fine. I'm a little worried about it. And other than that, you know, that will fit together right there. It's a little tough, but I'll have to sand it a little bit more. That'll fit together. And then the next thing I'm gonna have to do is cut out right in here for the trigger. So when the trigger is pulled, it manipulates the catch right here. And then once that's done, I'm just going to put a bar, um, have it around here somewhere, right here. This bar right here, it's gonna get epoxied on there and that will activate both of those catches for me. I'll probably have to sand this down just a little bit and then put it on there. But yeah. Um, never say this stuff is easy because this has taken me quite a bit. I think I started this Thursday night, or no, I started the concept Wednesday night. It is now Sunday night, but I'm hoping to pretty much have this done. Main issue right now is this is the last of the epoxy putty I have, which is a bit for concern, but we will pressure on, press, press on, press on. possible to get in here. So I have these. Make everything nice and pretty again. All right. So it's been an uphill battle, but the kind of, uh, basic mechanics here are finished. I've got two posts right here for the catch springs. I've got this right here, which will actuate the catch and actually release it. I've got it pretty much put together. I've already tested the, what do you call it? The uh, priming slide to make sure it's working. And I already have that bolted together. So the base of the blaster is essentially done. There's one thing I want to look into and that's that I forgot about the ratcheting mechanism that makes the sharp fire such a joy to prime. And well, I'm hoping that I can still use that ratcheting mechanism. I have to take a look at it because I'm not entirely sure how it works, but um, if I'm correct, I just have to epoxy on the, uh, the little pokey things up in there. They don't have any kind of mechanics for release or anything like that. So we're looking pretty damn good at this point. I am quite happy. Well, well, it comes right apart. No problem. It's uh, perfectly self-maintained. But yeah, I'm quite happy with how this is turning out. It's not perfect by any means, but then again, nothing I make ever is even close to that. But we're getting somewhere. And here we are on day, uh, whatever. This was, a uh, this was a pain in the dick. And it's not even done. Like, I, this is not even, I'm still working on it because I have to reinstall the brass, make both of them brass breeches. But, uh, I have verified that it catches and it fires. So, we're going to take some darts, two different colors, so we are very keen on making sure both things actually fire. And 
So there's one after another, which is uh, totally intentional, I might add. I wanted to do that, and I was worried about how I was going to do that, and then it just kind of did it. So that was that's nice of it. This brass needs to be polished. I'm just destroying this dart. Come on. Oh, come on. Jeez. Well, obviously, you can still fire both at the same time, but we'll try that again. With the pink one in the brass side. There we go. Put that bent up zombie strike one in that side. Pull that, and. Well, I'm glad I got that on film. Yeah, um, it works. Works fine. So now to drill out the air restrictor and, you know, brass it up and try to make it pretty. And that, that's a, that's a, that's a big try. Cause this is a, this is a monstrosity, but it works. I do apologize for the mess, but I hope you can understand because this has been an ordeal. That being said, let's, uh, let's show you how to do something that I did on my previous mod guide for this blaster and, well, brass breach it. So we're going to start by kind of pushing down the catch here and we're going to push in the bolt with our finger. Now, normally there will also be the, uh, the plunger head in there, but I'm assuming you're not all, uh, mouth breathers and can figure that out. So, we've got the bolt here, and you will notice there's already brass in it. This is the easiest step. I don't believe I should have to kind of explain how this goes, but you're going to want 17 30 seconds brass. Uh, this is KS Engineering or whatever it is. I found this at Hobby Town. You can find it on Amazon and stuff like that in packs of, I believe, three. Comes in, I believe it's one foot segment, something like that. But basically, you're going to fit it down in there. You're going to mark it with something. I used a razor blade. Then you are going to cut it out with your pipe cutters, which I left in my room, so I don't really want to go back in there. But I assume if you have the pipe, you know how to cut them. So that's the easy part. That's going to fit in there with no modifications whatsoever. The hard part is this. So this is 9 16 brass. And the thing with 9 16 brass is that... 1730 seconds will fit in it won't fit in over here because that's where I cut it out but over here it will fit in and it makes an airtight seal very 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 useful this basically makes it so instead of the air basically just popping right here and letting the dart out the dart can actually travel and build up a little momentum with the air pressure before going away so I don't have an exact measurement for this use whatever you think is good if you have too much obviously you're gonna have issues with the dart it's gonna have a lot of barrel drag so Use how much as appropriate to how much spring you are using, if that makes sense. This right here is not very much. It's like two inches. And once you got the brass in there, you're going to want to take the brass out. And I used a Dremel with a small sanding wheel. And you're going to gently sand the inside of it. And the reason you're going to do that is you're going to keep sanding it until this 9 16 brass will fit in there. It doesn't have to fit in very much like half an inch, something like that, just enough so it doesn't wobble around at all and makes a complete seal. So you can kind of see in there, bam. And it is that simple. The next part is going to be, we're going to take our bolt, we're gonna put it back in there. So make sure the knob is at the top there. I'm gonna shove that in there, push up again on the catch, get it in there. And you might have to finagle it just a little bit because you have to get it on the ridges, like so. So once it's uh, once it's sliding nice and smooth, you got that, you are going to close it. So put it all the way down. And you're going to put this down the front of it, and it's going to fit in there very lightly. You're going to hold it closed, so making sure the brass actually goes in there, but it's going to fit in there really snugly. So for this, I'm going to take off these little pieces right there. And originally, I had used epoxy putty. That worked really good. So basically, I put the epoxy putty in there. I sandwiched. Let's see if I can split this apart. And we'll have to do it from this side. I put the epoxy putty in there. I sandwiched this down. And then I closed it. Made sure it was straight. 
put it back together like that. I only put epoxy putty on one side and I left it sit there and for the epoxy to harden. And that worked great, but I don't have any epoxy putty. So we're gonna have to do this a different way. We are going to use hot glue. Is hot glue good? Well, it works for a lot of things. The reason why we're using it here is because this actually doesn't have too much force on it. It just has to softly slide inside there, which honestly doesn't require that much force. And Hot glue should hold it fine, but of course I will let you know in an annotation if it doesn't. But the outside of this brass is really pretty, and that's not gonna accept hot glue that much. So, I'm gonna rough it the hell up. And this will give the hot glue something to kind of dig into and bite into and make sure it grabs that. And we're also gonna do the same thing inside here. Again, I'm gonna try to make just like I did with the epoxy putty. I'm only gonna have it done on one side. So just rough that up, put your thumb in there, make sure you get all the particles out. You can wipe it down with uh, alcohol or something, but it's not a huge deal. And we are going to, I guess we'll kind of do it like this. We're gonna make sure we have the right side, first of all. Put that in there, close it, make sure it's just about good. Okay, we are going to put, some hot glue in there. Generous amount of it. I don't want to have too much, but enough. Going to make sure we have the right side. We're going to put that down. Make sure it's all the way down there. And we're going to push it forward. We are going to then put this back together like that. And close it shut with that. So that hot glue is going to harden and that's going to keep the brass in the right position. So yeah, there we go, getting somewhere. And just gotta repeat that with this side. And at the end of the day, what did this get us? It got us a monstrosity that shouldn't have been brought into this world that honestly, every day of its life, wishes it didn't exist. A monstrosity that one time I pulled this back and both plunger tubes came with it. A monstrosity that no matter what kind of adhesive I seem to want to use up here, it doesn't want to stay in there. A monstrosity that changes how it's going to fire depending on when you primed it and how you primed it and what color of a shirt you were wearing and what it's pointed at. And you know, sometimes it might not even want to fire at all. It's a travesty that should have never been brought into this world. And yet here it is sitting in front of you as something I toiled many, many hours in the building and overcame many, many obstacles for what? For a secondary that will probably never see competitive use, that will probably break the first time I take it into a, you know, a Nerf War. A monstrosity that I can't even quite grip the handle because the catch is there. And a trigger that doesn't seem to always want to fire. All of this simply because I wanted to do it. And at the end of the day, that's what you should be doing. You should be saying, because I could. You should be sitting there thinking, hey, you know what? I could probably do that. And nobody else probably ever will. So you do it. Because it, as with everything else, deserves a shot to actually sit on this plastic table with me cursing, screaming, cutting myself, burning myself, just everything under the sun. Because it deserves to be right here in front of us today as a monstrosity 
I don't think I've said that enough. An absolute, just disgusting, adhesive-filled sin against God. I'll see you next time.